In this tutorial, we're going to continue working on the back elements of the helmet. We're going to finish up the AI port and then put some more work into the three slats that we extruded down the back of the helmet in the previous episode and combine them into a singular mesh and add the fourth and final slat to the bottom of all of them. In addition to this, we're going to go ahead and cut down the poly count on the connecting parts of the ventilation tubes, as at the moment they've got a relatively high poly count, but I'll show you some keyboard shortcuts as to how we can easily cut that in half. I'll leave you guys to watch the modelling on screen at the moment and I will come back in once we go ahead to cut down the poly count on the connecting parts of the ventilation tubes. So with one of the connectors selected, we want to select one edge, leave a space of an edge, and then select the very next edge. Once we have that pattern selected, we want to hold down Control, Shift, and Plus, and that will extend our pattern of selections. Now we're just going to go around and do this for both sides, just so we can cut down the poly count. I go ahead and do this twice on both of them, just to bring down the poly count even further, as these are a rather minute detail, and I just don't believe they need that high of a poly count. So once again, we select one, skip an edge, select the next edge, hold down Control, Shift, and Plus, and that will select the pattern that we've just made in our selection. We just want to go ahead and inset the middle faces of these. As you'll notice with the subdivision surface modifier, we're getting this strange warping around the edges, and we just want to avoid that by doing an inset and adding quads just before the edge. We also don't need these to be an entire cylinder, so we can actually go ahead, cut these in half, and delete one half of them and just keep the other. It'll still keep the illusion that it is a full circle or cylinder from what we can see, but we just don't need all this extra geometry on the inside, so we can go ahead and remove it. Later on, we can apply the same principles to the hexagonal ventilation tubes that we've modeled in. Once we are happy with the design, we can go ahead, apply all of the modifiers, and then delete any of the excess geometry that is clipping inside the helmet, as it's just additional information that we don't need to keep around.
I don't believe I showed it, but I do go ahead and apply the solidifier modifier on these three slats at the back of the helmet here. I don't know what happened to the footage of it, but I do go ahead and apply it. I don't fully understand why I've applied the mirror modifier. You can definitely leave that on as I'm just creating additional work for myself at this stage. The cube we're about to bring in here is going to be responsible for a boolean operation on the slats at the back of the helmet. We just want to align the side faces up with the edges of the AI port, and then the top and bottom of it can go as high or as low as you want, as it's just going to take out the middle section of the slats at the back here.
So we're going to begin the process of merging all three of these separate meshes into a singular one. What we want to do with the edge loop we've just cut in is try to line it up with the row of vertices directly below it. So you'll notice once I've got that roughly in line, I can go ahead and merge those vertices and we'll do the exact same for the top row of this model. Since the top row will also be merging in with the middle row, we're going to need an additional loop cut through the top one just so that we can merge the additional row of vertices. Might be a little bit tricky to see what I'm doing here, but I select the top row of vertices of the middle part of the mesh, and then I select one of the edge loops that we cut into the top part of the mesh. With this, I do a bridge operation through the loop tools add-on, and then we do an edge slide to merge them into the bottom part of the top mesh. We can then do a by distance operation to dissolve all of those duplicates that we have, and that will connect our bottom and top meshes together. I actually did do the edge slide into the wrong part of the mesh, you'll notice in a second I go ahead and rectify this, it's okay, it doesn't really matter that much because all of our edges are pretty well lined up, we just want to make sure that the top row of edges is merging down into that bottom flat section of the top of the mesh there. This angle should make it a little bit easier to see what we've just done. So we have that middle row of edges at the moment. That's what we just merged with the top selection of vertices of the middle part of the mesh. And we've just gone ahead and adjusted that back into the creased edge between the two meshes. It might be a little bit complicated. I hope it's a little bit easier to see on your end, but I'm about to repeat the process here. So we select the top row of vertices or edges of the very bottom of the mesh. We then go ahead and select one of the loop cuts that we made in the middle section of the mesh, do a bridge operation by distance to remove the doubles, and then we can delete this inner edge of faces that we no longer need. And now our top mesh, middle mesh, and bottom mesh will all be connected nicely. Just need to go ahead and fix up some of the creasing as it may have been removed once we've done a by distance operation. But once we've done that, you'll notice all of our mesh is nicely connected together and we have nice edges on the outside and inside parts of the mesh. With this plane here, I'm looking to align the bottom edge of it in the middle of the bottom slat at the back of the helmet there. I do actually end up going ahead and scrapping this version of the design. However, it serves as a good base for the time being, and later on when I go back to fix it, it turns out looking a lot better. So you can go ahead and just block this out much as I'm doing, so we have a point of reference for where some of the other details are going to exist, but I do end up redoing it. I don't know if there's a massive change in the design that I get, but I just felt the need to go back and do it again and do it with a fresh pair of eyes. If you're getting any errors with your bevel that we're trying to apply to this edge right now, do as I just did, tap back out into object mode and apply the scale of the mesh and then you will get a more uniform bevel. If you modify the scale of an object and then try to bevel it without applying the scale, you get really strange results. So just make sure you go ahead and apply the scale for that plane.
I went ahead and added in an extra edge and dissolved the very top edge as I didn't like the fact that the bevel was actually intersecting with the AI port. So I just wanted to bring it all down a bit and that's why now I'm going ahead and doing the space and relax operations just to get a nice profile back on the bevel. So for my design philosophy, I just didn't like the idea of the bevel touching the actual AI port. As I said earlier, I go ahead and take a second attempt at this because I wasn't quite happy with the design I had there. So that's what I'm doing right now. You probably could keep what we've already done. I just wanted to take another attempt at it because I generally find I can get a better result if I try it a second or third time. So at the moment, these back slats are actually missing a component. There's a fourth piece that actually comes down from it. And you'll notice that if you have a look at our pure reference board. So we're just going to go ahead, duplicate the very bottom one, bring it down a little bit, and then we're going to make some adjustments to the shape and design of it. As once again, if you look at our reference board, you'll notice that it has a little bit of a different design. So we're going to go ahead and model that in right now. I just now noticed that only the fourth slat at the back of the helmet here actually has this curved and wavy design. So what we want to do is select the vertice to the farthest right of each of these edges, set the origin point to be the 3D cursor at the selected vertice, and then scale Z to zero, and that will bring a nice straight line about on all of these edges. Much like we did with the slats above, we want to select the top rightmost vertice and then we want to go ahead, set the 3D cursor to be our origin point and scale zero to the Z axes.
Final step we're going to take in the modeling of these slats at the back of the helmet here is adding this fourth one into the geometry of these other three. So duplicating the fourth slat that we've just modeled, we're going to apply a boolean to the three above it, and then we're going to do some retopology afterwards. You'll notice that despite putting the boolean in place, it's not actually doing anything at the moment, and that's because we have an open-ended mesh. So all we need to do, and it doesn't need to be exact by any means, it can be a very rough and shoddy job, we just need to go ahead and close this mesh out by filling in the top, side, and back faces of all of this. You'll notice that the boolean is now applied, however we are still going to go and round out the rest of the faces on this just for the sake of consistency. So with our boolean object fully modelled out, we shall leave the tutorial there and do the required retopology in the next episode to fully integrate the fourth slat into the rest of the model. In saying that, I will see you guys in the next tutorial.